Welcome to the video on the JavaScript Pizza Parlor competency demonstration. By completing the Pizza Parlor project, which is one of two possible competency demonstrations to complete the full modules, you will be demonstrating your ability to use JavaScript and jQuery to build effective and creative websites. This project is posted in your modules and I'm not going to continue to read all of the competencies, you can read them yourselves. This is mostly a demonstration to show you how a pizza parlor project would work. The specifications of this project include that you have a three-page interactive website which will simulate the order process of a pizza parlor. In your order process, the first page is your ordering of the pizza. You are to have three specialty pizzas and you can have them to be something such as a meat lovers, a veggie lovers, a Hawaiian, something that you want to be creative with. A one of those would also, an additional one would be a build your own pizza. To have six toppings. Please don't do more than six toppings. I've had people in the past that have tried to do 25, 30 toppings. You're just trying to complicate it more than it needs to be demonstration of your your competencies here. You know, you can do pepperoni, sausage, hamburger, onion, tomatoes, mushrooms. You know, six is plenty to show that you understand what you're trying to do. You need to have two different types of crust, pan crust, thin crust, stuffed crust, something like that. Just two is fine. And three different sizes, 12 inch, 16 inch, small, medium, large, that type of thing. When your user orders a specialty pizza, your toppings for your build your own pizza should become unavailable for your user to select from. Okay, You should make this dynamic so as they are selecting a specialty pizza, a size, and a type of crust, you're going to display the type of pizza that they are selecting. You're going to be building the total, subtotal, tax, and total as you go through on their page. Okay. Once the pizza has been selected, you're going to verify that they've got a size, a type of pizza, if it's a build your own. They may want just a plain cheese pizza, that's fine. They don't have to select toppings. A type of crust and a size. You're going to use cookies, JavaScript cookies, to carry the pizza information over to the next page. The second page is where you're going to collect the customer information. You're going to collect a first name, a last name, an email address, an apartment number if it's applicable to the customer, city, state, zip, and phone number. I am not going to stress strong enough that you should not request any credit card or payment information. This is a simulation and it is your responsibility as a student not to collect this information. By doing so, you are opening yourself up to liabilities. People steal packets across the web. If you have a credit card going across the web, you as the student are responsible for that possibility of that credit card information being stolen. Do not collect credit card information. Okay, Once you've collected this information, you need to verify that the person has correctly filled out their first name, their last name, a valid email address, a street address, a city, a state, a zip, and a phone number formatted as area code dash prefix dash four digit suffix to their phone number. Okay, so you're going to have to do some validation here, making sure that the fields are filled out, that it is formatted as a good email address, and that is the way the phone number is correctly formatted. Once you've validated that, then you're going to go to the summary page, which will show that they are all the information. You're going to pass the customer information and the pizza information and the pricing information via JavaScript cookies. And finally, you'll want to show them a countdown 
showing when their pizza will be delivered. You can use a 30 minute to one hour countdown. Something that's fairly easy to do and kind of fun to add a little interaction with your end user. Now that you've we've talked about it, I want to show you how that will work and give you a couple of hints, ideas on how you can make sure some of these things run a little bit smoother for you. So here's a pizza order and I hope you can see it and I've called mine pizzaparlorexample.com and you can see it's easily laid out and in order to make it easy on myself you might notice that I set up some defaults when the page is refreshed come on reload those things are going to automatically be there this is one thing I said you had to have make sure that they had a size a crust and a type if you have defaults set there you guys you're gonna have those things already built in so that's one way of just making sure your first page is already taken care of I want you to take particular notice of this area over here this is my dynamic area and as I make changes now it shifts a little bit you'll notice that's because I have it on a smaller screen you'll notice that my pricing and my type change I'm gonna make this a 12 inch deep dish and I'm going to order a veggie at the moment notice that my build your own is options are not available and you can either do them by making them disappear like I did or you can make them grayed out whichever you want to do once you've done that you notice my pricing changed my summary of what I'm ordering changed I did tell them what it was on that so I have a little bit different I have pineapple and tomatoes on my veggie I'm selections I can submit my order and you can see my order page notice that my 12 inch deep dish veggie is carried forward and just to show you that I can go ahead and change that I'll make this a hand tossed build your own with Canadian bacon pepperoni and sausage and again it's changing oh it's gonna be a 20 inch everybody's coming instead and I'm at sixteen dollars and sixty four cents now and submit it I'm at sixteen sixty four drag this down a little bit because my order got a little bit bigger and everything's complete so let's say I decided to click order your pizza without putting any information in here I think I'm gonna have to bring this out a little bit because my error information is going to pop this out a little bit order my information it's going to tell me your first name is required and if I hit enter again it's going to tell me my last name is required and it's going to tell me my email address is required and it's going to tell me my address is required and it's going to skip apartment because apartments not required and it's going to tell me states required and to show you a little bit more verification I'm going to put in a junk zip code it'll come back in a second and to show you that it's going to give me a little bit more verification I'm going to put in a non-valid and I'm going to put in a bad email address to you guys so that you can see that okay and I'm going to try to order my pizza now and it's going to say please enter a valid phone number so now I'm going to do one two three dash one two three dash one two three four so that it's formatted correctly and it's telling me now please enter a five digit zip code and finally it'll tell me 
to please put in a valid email address. And notice these error messages were cleared as I went through. And I'm doing this on a small screen, so it's not looking too pretty at the moment as I'm doing it shifting in and out. But now I'm going to order my pizza. And here's my total summary. You notice I've got a countdown timer that's saying that it's going to be available in 29 minutes and 50 seconds. It's telling me where my pizza is going to be delivered, which is the college address. It's giving me a 20 inch build your own with Canadian bacon, pepperoni, and sausage, and my subtotal, my tax, and my total. So that's what your final project should look like as far as a competency if you wanted to attempt to do this before you um, finish all the modules. So thank you very much and if you have any questions be sure that to address them to me.